listener, and welcome back to Koinonia Kind's online ministry with your host, Bill Redfield. Today on our program, we will present another installment with Pastor Sam Buckingham, teaching on the book of Ephesians as part of a series he presented at his home church, Columbia River Fellowship, in Mansfield, Washington. Today, Pastor Sam begins in chapter 4, where Paul continues to give instruction on how to walk in the Christian life. Now, let's join Pastor Sam. All right, we are still in Ephesians, so please turn to Ephesians chapter 4. And remember, the type of ministry that the Lord has given me is to, to teach the Word of God basically verse by verse. And I'm a, what they call an expository teacher. So what happens is, when you go through the Bible, you hit themes. And when you get there, don't think that I think that I'm preaching this because I think there's a problem with you. Does that make sense? I didn't hear something out there and I decided, well, I better preach on that. We hit things because that's where we're at in the scripture. So in Ephesians chapter 4, we kind of change just a little bit. But it's still going with the same thing. Remember that we are a group of people who are so blessed because we have received grace. Right? Grace. And religion teaches that you got to earn God's grace. But true Christianity, okay, and I don't even want to call it Christianity because people have gotten weird with that. A, A true Christian, one who has received Jesus as Savior and whose sins are taken away, has received grace, not because of what we've done, but because of what he did. That's the reason why we preach the cross. That's the reason why we still talk about the blood. Amen? So verse 1 of chapter 4 says this, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which which you were called. Now remember, uh, verse 20 of chapter 3 says, as he ends That section of scripture says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Man, we've got the power of God working in us. So if God is for us, who can be against us? We've got the the power. You're talking about the universe. God is the God of the universe. Amen? Amen. And the power that created the universe is the power that's working in us. And the only people that have that power are the people who have received, not earned, but have received the grace of God. And when you have received the grace of God and you are walking in His mercy, then God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or that we can even think about. So that, even you Baptists, should go, once again, a little of a hallelujah over that. Okay? Yeah. Okay? You you should get kind of excited about that. Because, man, we've got everything. Everything's going for us. In a world that people think is getting better, come on. You think this is better than what it used to be? It's getting worse, but for us. Eternally, it's getting better, right? And remember, keep remembering this. On earth, for a Christian, this is as close to hell as we'll ever get. But for those who do not have Jesus, this is as close to heaven. Can you imagine? This is heaven for them? It's hard to believe. But we, we have something to look, we have eternal hope. Amen? We have what's called the blessed hope. So that's that's good. So because of all those things, Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. Beseech means to exhort or to encourage us. In other words, he's saying, come on, we can listen. Because of this grace and because of what we have received and the benefits that we have and that we have a God who can who can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Because of those things, he encourages us okay, to walk worthy of the calling which you were called. So since we have received such a, a grace, okay, because we have received this power, okay, God wants us to walk. 
The word walk means to move forward, right? We're, we're moving forward, we're moving ahead. The scripture would call this pressing on. We're pressing on, we're moving, we're going somewhere. We're doing something. Because God has, has given us everything that we need to move forward. We're a group of people who once were lost, but now we're found. We're blind, but now we see. And because of all those things, there is a way that God wants us to walk. Amen? There, there is a way. There's a way to live. Now, I'm, I'm reading this and thinking that maybe these Ephesians who Paul loved and, and were born again, they might have needed to hear this. Because remember, in 2,000 years' time, technology may be different, but human behavior is still the same. And sin nature is still the same. And the Lord said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this devil is still working on people just like he did back then. And God is still delivering people. And God is still empowering people. And they needed to hear this because when they understood that they have a grace and a power from God, he's saying now because of that, there's a way that we're supposed to behave. Now remember, God has not given us something to do that he hasn't empowered us to do already. Amen? So, he, so he's not asking us to do something that he will not help us do. I found several quotes that I could not better, so I'm just going to read them to you the way I found them. It says, it behooves Christians to walk worthy of the source. It behooves Christians to walk worthy of the substance. It behooves Christians to walk worthy of the sequence of their high and holy calling of God in Christ. So it behooves us to walk according to that which we have received. If we've received everything, then we should start to behave like we have. Have you ever thought of that? Now, you're going to say, well, Sam, you're going to talk about behavior. And I've seen you do this, and I've heard you say that. And, or you might say to somebody else, well, this person does that, or that person, or some other Christian leader. And I guess I have this to say that. People who are looking for excuses say, I saw somebody else do this, so I'm not going to. The people are always looking for excuses for what they're doing, always looking at what somebody else is doing when they hear a sermon like this. They want to say, well, I don't want to stop doing what I'm doing, so I'm going to point the finger at somebody else. Well, you know what? Even if you see me do something wrong, it's wrong. But that doesn't change the word of God. Even though you might see some other Christian leader do something wrong, the Word of God is still the Word of God. And people are wrong a lot. So if you've seen me in any behaviors that are wrong, they're wrong. Okay? Or someone else. They're not right. They're wrong. And I'm not walking the way God wants me to walk sometimes. I want to use it, that's okay. It's not okay. But you've got to understand that I'm still under grace just like you are doesn't make it right. And as God works on me to walk worthy of the, way, of the grace that he's given me, the same goes for you and all of us. Amen? And once again, it doesn't matter what nation you're from. God is still God. Jesus is still Jesus. His word is still the word. Whatever language you speak, okay, or whatever culture you come from, these are things that remain the same no matter what culture no matter what nation, God's word is still God's word to any group of people. So it doesn't matter where you're at. These people are in the Middle East. Today, this, we would call these people living in the Middle East. And this word was as just appropriate for them as it is for us today. Amen? So don't be a person who's looking for an excuse. Be a person who looks at the word of God and says, okay. I got some things to work on because I know that God has given me everything I need. Now I need to start being responsible for my behavior. And there are some behavior problems in the church because people are weak, people are young in the Lord, people aren't mature, right? Because in a church, you're going to have baby Christians, and mature Christians, and people in between, right? And, and those who are mature are supposed to start leading those who aren't. And we're supposed to learn how to walk according to what we have received from God. But usually what happens is we just start pointing fingers at people and accusing people. Well, you're not doing this right. You're not doing that right. 
Well, how about praying for them? How about teaching them how to walk? How about living as an example? And how about helping people understand how they can overcome their weaknesses to what Jesus did on the cross? Amen? All right. So there is a way to walk. I wanted to give a couple of scriptures here. One in Philippians. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. As Paul was saying this, and you should probably have this uh, memorized. Paul said, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And I'm going to focus on the living right now. There's a way to live, and it's the way of Christ. And in our growing up, we've got to start to understand that maybe some of the ways that we do things and some of the attitudes we have, even though we're saved, aren't the attitudes of Christ. And they're not the actions of Christ. And they're not the words that Christ would use. Are you hearing me? So once again, I want you to understand, I don't think there's a problem. This is just something we need to learn. And as people say, more and more and more. Amen? Amen. All right, so here's another scripture. Romans chapter 12. Now, there are several. I just picked these. Go to Romans 12. Here's something to aim for. Because this is what God's word says to all of us about our behavior. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Scripture says, be of the same mind toward one another. If you're going to be of the same mind toward one another, you're going to have to back off and start working on your own behavior and helping others, right? Because we're talking about unity in the spirit between Christian people, across denomination and across nations. We're all part of the same kingdom of God. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your minds on high things, but associate with the humble. That's an attitude. Do not be wise in your own opinion. So get rid of the bad attitude toward yourself and toward other people. And then it says here, here's behavior, behavioral things. Now think about this. And the scripture says to judge yourself, right? Think about this. He says in verse 17, repay no one evil for evil. Remember the old saying, I don't get mad, I just get even? Well, that's human stuff. That's worldly stuff. That's fleshly stuff. That's a sin. The scripture says, repay no one evil for evil. Are you letting that sink in just a little bit? This, this is one of those that you need to say, ouch. You can feel it kind of digging in on you, right? Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. Now, all men even means those who aren't saved. All men. You've got to pe treat people right. Verse 18 says, if it is possible. Now, remember, this is speaking to you. Not to whoever you may be having a problem with. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. The possibility starts with you. If somebody else doesn't want to live peaceably with you, you can't change them. You can only deal with your own attitude. Okay, so we, we deal with this stuff all the time. We're in we're, drama, is what we call it. You know, you got drama going on with people. A lot of that drama would go away if you would have the attitude that said, if it's possible, I'm going to do everything I can to live at peace with this person. Because the old saying is, it takes two to tango. It takes two to fight. God's people don't want to get in a fight. Usually what happens is our pride gets in the way and we're going to show them. And then you start getting into those conversations like this. Well, when I was with them, I said this. And I told, ever hear that? Have you ever done it? I said this to them and I said that. I bet you in 20 minutes or so when people are milling around here talking, pretty soon one of you are going to start talking like that. You know what that is? That's your pride. I said this to them and I said that to them and I did this and I did that. Because you know that if you're like me, you love to compete. I mean, it's part of our nature and I'm very competitive but the scripture says about our behavior, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Behold, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen? So we're talking about our behavior as Christians. This is the flip side of the emphasis we have been taught about over the last few years 
that we have to preach it. We have to speak the word of God. Because in the church worldwide, people have been teaching us that don't preach it, just live it and they'll figure it out. No, we we'll still hold to that. And I even read some comments in this section that said, remember, the best sermon anyone will hear is the one that you live out. That's, that's false. The best sermon you will ever hear is one that somebody preaches. You have to preach it, but according to the Word of God, you also have to live it. We have to live it. And this is something that we need to get hold of. I know you can argue with God's Word if you want to, but you're, you're beating your head against the wall. God's Word is God's Word. He wants you to live a certain way. Let's look at another portion of Scripture, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, 1 through 7. Verse 1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Now is this written to us? So we have an example. It's the Lord. And we're to try to live like Him. You remember when you were a kid and, you know, if you grew up in a good home, if you were a boy, you, just, you really wanted to be just like Dad. Well, as children of God, we should want to be just like Dad, our Heavenly Father. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love. So you're going to walk in love, then you're not going to do insult for insult, injury for injury. You're not going to try to repay evil for evil, right? As far as it depends on you, you're going to be at peace with people the best you can. You're going to walk in love. So walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Remember, they did Jesus wrong, and he's the only person that walked on this earth that never sinned. He did not deserve one bit of that. So how we respond to people should be more like that. And once again, boy, this is hard, because our human nature doesn't want to do that. Honestly, if you had to count the many times of how I've responded to people, whether I did it the right way or the wrong way, I'm sure that I'm a little heavy on the wrong. I've dealt with it in the wrong way. If you're honest with yourself, you'll probably find out or think about how you've dealt with people you've dealt probably not in the correct godly manner. So this is where we need to start asking God to say, Lord, I believe you have a way for me. Help my unbelief and help me receive the power that you gave me, that you bought for me on the cross so that I can overcome this behavior. Because remember, the scripture says we're more than overcomers. Verse 3 says, and it starts picking on some things. But fornication, which is, I'm like, how many, we don't have any little guys here, just older high school kids. So all that fornication means sex outside of marriage. Well, you might go, uh-oh, for all of us who grew up in the 60s and 70s, uh-oh. And there's nothing that these kids are doing today that people from our generation didn't invent. Sorry, guys, you think you invented all this stuff? Uh, ask some of us who have gray hair. Uh, <laughs> you guys, you didn't make this stuff up. But remember, Paul is saying it 2,000 years ago here. So it must have been going on then, too. Right? Didn't Solomon say there's nothing new under the sun? So he is saying here, but fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. We've got some repenting to do. We've, we've got a standard that God wants us to live up to. But remember, he's the one that gives us the power to do it. There's a way God wants us to live. And the first way, the thing that we've got to do is admit to God and maybe just some people, I, need, I don't need to hear all your dirty laundry or, you know, you don't need to bring it to me all the time. Sometimes people do, and that's okay. And you don't need to spread everything you've done out there, but you need to spread it to God. And confess it and say, Lord, I know this stuff is wrong. Help me. Help me. And remember, God gives you grace. God gives you power. You know, and you might repent of it today and just get caught up again tomorrow. And if you do, go back to the Lord and say, Lord, how many times has God... You think he's going to forgive you? He told us, to re, you know, 70 times 7, which means more than you can count, right? Scripture says you're going to fall, you could fall down seven times, and what would he do? Pick you up, but you've got to admit it. And you can't say that this stuff is right. You can't say it's right. You've got to start saying this is wrong. I've got to get it out of my life because the Lord says it shouldn't be named among the church. 
And remember, if I start doing this, three fingers coming back at me. So don't think I'm preaching from a holier-than-thou standpoint. I'm not. But this is the Word of God, and it's my job to preach it. So don't let it even be named among us. It's not fitting for us, because there's a way for us to walk. Verse 4, neither filthiness, I mean, there's a million things that could come underneath that title, filthy behavior, nor foolish talking, or coarse jesting. <laughs> you know, when you teach, especially if you get freshman boys, it seems like when kids, they go up to about the eighth grade, all of a sudden their brains are working pretty good, they're kind of on top of the mountain, and they become freshmen, and they're on the bottom of the pile again. It's like their brain turns off all over again. And pretty soon, they're just kind of... <laughs> and they're talking about just the dumbest stuff. And it's coarse jesting. And they talk nasty, uh, inappropriate conversations. We're always having to jump on them for that. It makes me mad because I'm an older man and I'm, I'm, I don't want to hear that kind of talk. But then I go back to when we were that age and I go, oh yeah, I remember that. But the Lord says, get it out of your life. Don't let it be in the church. So if you're hearing this, if there's no coincidences with God, then he is saying to all of us, we've got to work on this. Let's get it out of our life. This filthiness, this foolish talking, coarse jesting, dirty jokes and stuff like that. These things are not people. They're not fitting, but rather give thanks to the Lord for what he's done for us. So the scripture is pretty clear. Verse 5 says, For this you know that no fornicator unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Christ in God. Let no one deceive you with empty words for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. So he's saying to the church this is what's going to happen to people who haven't received him and this is their lifestyle. And he's saying to the church, some of you are doing this. And what is he saying? Stop it. Don't say it's okay. You might struggle with it. It might take you a while to start overcoming this. But receive what God has for you. Because he's able to do above and beyond anything you can ask or think. Amen? So he's given us a way to live. Because he doesn't want you to live like those who the wrath of God is going to come upon. He doesn't want you to live like the rest of the world. So that when he starts saying this, they're not going to receive the kingdom of God. He's telling us, don't be partakers with the world. Because the wrath of God is coming upon the world. It's not coming on you if you're a born again Christian. He's saying to you, don't live like it is. Amen? Don't do it. And if you have... Get on the forgiveness bandwagon. Confess your faults. Confess your sin. If you confess your sin, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I'm going to ask you honestly, in the last seven days, this week, how many of you have done things that you should be confessing to God? Okay, mine's up. <laughs> okay. All right. So the reality is, there is a way for us to walk and we can do it because God's empowered us, but we need to encourage one another while it's still called a day, lest we fall to the deceitfulness of sin. The Lord wouldn't put those things in his word if it wasn't a fact that we could fall to the deceitfulness of sin. So he's saying to us, you all have to deal with it. Now I'm going to give you the power to overcome it. You just have to start confessing it and believing that God can give you the power that he has already through the cross through the blood. Amen? Amen? Then we go back to Ephesians 4, verse 2. So how? How do we do this so that we can live right? What's the attitude that we're supposed to have while we're doing this, when we're trying to believe God? And verse 2 tells us the attitude that we're supposed to have. The attitude is this. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's how the body of Christ is supposed to live. Why do we have disunity in the body? Because of pride. 
And this whole attitude that I've made it and you haven't, so get your act together because I'm there and you're not, and so I'm not tolerating you. Notice how I did that with the facial expression and the tone of voice? I had a lot of practice. I know how to lay that one on people. I know how to do it. it you learn that type of behavior because the church taught it for so long. You know what the scripture says, and we've said it before, you get that way because you've forgotten the form of purification of your sin. You forgot that you were, just, you were doing stuff just like they were. You get this rotten attitude that's full of pride. But the Lord says you're going to have to do it with lowliness. Lowliness comes with a lack of self-assertiveness or pride and a sense of unworthiness. Lowliness comes with a sense of unworthiness. That's the reason why when you hear Paul preach, he would say, I am the chief among sinners. He knew. He knew where he, he was a murderer. Had people killed in the name of religion. Stood by and watched Stephen get stoned. And said, go at it, boys. Give me your coats. Chief among sinners. He persecuted the church, which he became a part of. Amen? But he kept himself humble because he remembered where he came from. That's what we have to do. And so when we're dealing with people in the church and their behaviors, and they keep falling and stumbling, you've got to understand that we're supposed to deal with things in the church with a lowly attitude, a humble attitude. That doesn't mean we allow somebody to come in and say, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. No. We say, I just told you some of the things that are wrong. But we help people who struggle in those areas. And we pray for them. And we deal with them with a sense and an attitude of humility. Amen? This is what humility will cause us to do. Go to Proverbs 16, 3. And I'm hoping this is going to work here because the Lord showed me these verses and I haven't thought about them in a while. So maybe this is a prophetic word to us that you can judge that if you want. But it is the word of God. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit your works to the Lord and, and your thoughts will be established. You remember when the Lord said, <clears throat> that we are to cast our cares or our fears or our anxieties on him. Amen. If you remember when the Lord said that his burden is light and his yoke is easy. Okay, you, you think about that. Now you think about this word commit. The word commit means to roll or to roll down or to roll away. Like how they rolled away the stone from Jesus' tomb. To roll it away. So you think about that. It's the picture of a camel... Burdened with a heavy load, when the load is to be removed, the camel kneels down, tilts far to one side, and the load rolls off. That's what the word commit means here. So we've got all these burdens in our life, and there's a way that God wants us to walk. What are we going to do? We're going to go, this is in the Spirit, to the cross, and we're going to commit our way to the Lord. And that includes your weaknesses. And you're going to kneel down like a camel, roll to the side, and you're going to let those things roll off you to the Lord. And you're not going to carry that burden. Uh-oh, I got a little anointing here. Ever have an anointing that you get to feel? Okay, you get to roll those things off of you. Because those are not burdens you're supposed to carry. Those are burdens that the Lord bought on the cross for you. You can just sit here in your head and you can start going, well, this I need, oh man, this is, I'm still dealing with this. He dealt with it for you. Roll it, commit it to the Lord. And the thoughts that you have established for yourself, the way you really want to be, the scripture says he will, what? Establish it for you. He will do it for you. Because there's really, in all Christians, in our hearts and our minds, there's a way we want to walk. And it's the way the Lord wants us to walk. And we're dealing with all this crud. And the Lord says, cast it on him. Roll it toward him. And then the plans that you have, roll your plans, whatever plans they are. Roll it toward him. Get it off of your back. Like a camel, kneel down and roll it. Get it off your back. It's not for you to have to burden yourself. It's not for you to pack. Remember the Lord did it on the cross. And guess what? That big stone that represented death, what did he do with death? 
He rolled it away. He rolled it. Come on. Praise God. Yeah, hallelujah. And in Haitian, it's been a swallow Praise the Lord. So cast your cares on him. Roll your stuff toward him. Let's look at another scripture. Psalms 37, 15. It says the same thing. Psalms 37, 15. Five, excuse me. Not 15, five. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Kneel down like a camel. Roll over like this and roll it toward him. And here's another one. Joshua 5, 9. That's Old Testament. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I have rolled away. Same word. Same word. It says, This day I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. Therefore, the name of the, of the place is called Gilgal to this day. And what I'm going to say there is this. The Lord rolled away the burden of Egypt off of Israel. He rolled away their bonds of slavery. Amen? He's done the same thing for us. We're not slaves to sin. There is a way that he wants us to walk. He, will, he can do above and beyond everything we can ask or think. He can get, take these things from us. He can teach us how, and he can empower us how, he can give us the mercy to, he can give us the grace to walk the way he wants us to walk. And it's something we need to receive. Amen? So praise God. And it is an act of faith, people. Because without faith, you can't please God. So, we, so in faith, we roll our burdens toward Him. And we roll our sins toward Him. We roll our fleshly nature toward Him. And we say, Lord, we're going to, to the best of our ability, walk the way You want us to walk. Because we don't want this stuff named among the church. Amen? We're going to quit pointing fingers at one another. And we're going to encourage one another. And we're going to lift one another up in prayer. And we're going to get behind the one who was tempted in all ways but without sin. It doesn't mean we don't speak truth. I spoke a lot of truth today in the midst of my own weaknesses. But our attitude is humility when we do it. Amen? Amen. 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 So that's the will of God for our lives according to the word from the scripture. Amen? again. We hope you were blessed by what you have heard. Have questions? Please feel free to comment below or drop us a note via email. Our email address is tidbitsoftheword at gmail.com. Quinonia Kind Ministries is sponsored by Quinonia Kind LLC, whose sole focus is to get the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ out to all who will believe. Look for additional episodes with Pastor Sam and be sure to like and follow us on YouTube. Quinnia Kind Ministries and Tidbits of the Word are Red Guitar Productions. There will never be a greater day in history.